Hey guys! First of all, thank you very much for the great comments on the giveaway video. It really made my day. New entries are still more than welcome at this moment. It will probably take a few more days till we hit 1000, so everybody has plenty of time to have a go at it. Now, it's been some time since our last art review, so I think it's high time we corrected that. We will continue our tier 3 journey with a closer look at the second German SPG, the Bison. This little beast has very distinct characteristics that will also be very much visible during the Ace Tanker gameplay in a tier 5 match. If you want to jump straight to the juicy bits, the quick link stands ready, as usual, in the description below. So, the Bison. This machine has actually quite a bit of history, even if a somewhat checkered one. It was actually one of the first self-propelled guns in the German war machine, as development began shortly after the invasion of Poland, when they realized that they need artillery support that's capable of keeping up with the battle. The solution came in the form of mounting a regular 15mm field howitzer onto the chassis of the Panzer I Ausführung B. With this early conversion came, however, a lot of design flaws and imperfections that have been considered later on with the other SPGs. The most obvious shortcomings are the lack of protection for the crew, with the loaders being fully exposed even to small arms fire, and the surprisingly large size of this thing that made it a very easy target indeed. What was even more serious was that it was plagued by mechanical breakdowns all the time, because it was simply too heavy. And best for last, due to the limited space it actually did not have any ammunition loadout at all, and was instead fully reliant on a separate ammo carrying vehicle. Despite all these shortcomings, the about three dozen bisons that were produced did see quite a lot of action. Between 1940 and 43, they were involved in the Battle of France, the invasion of the Balkans, and also in Operation Barbarossa, where a lot of them actually met their end. So after this little bison history, I guess you are wondering whether the in-game version has just as many flaws. Well, yes and no, but let's see those dirty numbers a bit closer. Those of you who like comparing statistics have probably already noticed that this is a machine of the extremes. A lot of its values are rather unique in its tier, one way or the other. Sticking to the most interesting part, the gun, the penetration is something that many of you will be excited about, especially if you did play already some of the other self-propelled guns in this tier. 75mm is godlike at tier 3. And despite the lower Alfie image at only 350, you will have far less of those situations when you do some ridiculously low amount of damage because your HE shells potential got soaked up by the thick armor of the opposition. Don't get fooled by the 80mm of penetration of the SU-26 in the chart, by the way. That's actually AP penetration, that's the standard ammunition there. HE in that machine has an awful 42mm only, so the Bison is leaps and bounds ahead of its competition here. Sticking to the good news, with an above 3.5 meter burst radius, you are the only SPG in this tier that actually has a chance of splashing the enemy when they miss. And there is still more to come. Look at that gun elevation. 75 degrees is crazy good, and that's not even only unique in this tier, but there are actually only very few other SPGs in the whole game that can shoot with such a high arc. This naturally also means that you will find it easier hitting enemies that think they are safe behind cover. So, let's recap. Great penetration, excellent burst radius for its tier and overall fantastic gun elevation. Totally OP, right? Well, not exactly. You see, for every good value there are two drawbacks to compensate. The Bison has the worst rate of fire with barely above 2.5 shots per minute, it's hopelessly inaccurate with 0.86 meters dispersion, it has a terrible gun arc of only 12 degrees, which means that you will have to rely on the slowest aim time of its tier due to the constant re-aiming, and finally, to add soul to injury, the firing range is mediocre at best, thus you will have to be careful to keep up with the battle, or you will be left behind. So, this gun is really the gun of the extremes, but the full picture is not as rosy as it might have seemed to be at first glance. And unfortunately the remaining stats are not too friendly either. It has the worst armor with a flat all around 13mm of protection only, but the bigger problem is that it has also the worst camo rating by far, so you will get spotted easily. 
And if you do, with only 16 degrees of hull traverse, good luck repelling the enemy light tanks. Another drawback is the quite limited ammunition this vehicle carries in the game. You have to watch your shots and make them count, otherwise you will find yourself without any ammunition by the end of the game. Alright, to end it on a higher note, let's admit that at least the top speed at 40 km per hour is quite good, so you have at least that. I mean overall, this is not a bad machine, but it can be a quite frustrating experience sometimes. Try to position yourself behind ridge lines to counter your poor camo rating and take advantage of your high gun elevation. Focus on enemy tanks that think they are safe, but in reality you can still get to them because of your high shell trajectory. And most importantly, be patient with it when things are not going your way, which undoubtedly will happen from time to time. Now all of this is not to say that you can't do well in it if it behaves itself, and hopefully the next day's tank RM will show you exactly that. Alright, so here we are on airfield in a standard battle. We are in our bison and unfortunately we did get ourselves into a tier 5 match. So that can be tricky, even though this machine has one of the best uh, penetrations from all the low tier artilleries at 75mm, some of the uh, tier 5 heavy tanks can pose a problem if we don't hit them in the right spot. Luckily, the uh, enemy heavies only consisting of a Churchill and a T1 heavy, neither of, neither of which is a big threat, we can easily land an HE shell on top of them, which should do its job just nicely. Now, in the beginning, I unfortunately do quite a stupid mistake, which is the way I position myself. Now, probably in my mind I was just focusing on that I have the range to shoot at that bottleneck where usually the uh, heavies play it out. The thing is, if you position yourself here on top of this ridge, as the enemy lights come up in that middle region, they can easily spot you. And there we go, aggressive scout, Panzer 1C, just rushing our base. So that means, if there would be someone behind him, they would no doubt shoot me, and I could get easily be killed right in the beginning of the match. So, it's unfortunately something I can't change anymore, but I definitely would position myself on the other side of the ridge. With the gun elevation, as we discussed, I could easily shoot over and still would have the range to rain down some HE shells on the um, T1 Heavy and the Churchill that are expected to pop up in that middle region. And by the way, when I'm talking about that bottleneck, I'm talking about the E6 square. Now, take note, and there we go, there is the Churchill. So, have a look at the um, terrible, terrible gun arc that this machine has. 12 degrees is really tricky, and you will see me constantly re aiming. And unfortunately, that's 0.86 accuracy for you meant that we only did 21 damage to the Churchill. That was minor splash damage. But that's okay. We have enough possibilities to catch up on it. Alright, so have a look, by the way, at the uh, ammunition count. The game just started and we only have 9 shots left. That's how little ammunition this, uh, this thing carries, you really have to watch it. Otherwise you will suddenly find yourself in a nasty surprise. Come on, Matilda. Also, as you can see, the um, shell travel time is really a lot. And, once again, minor splash damage only. It's quite unfortunate. So far we couldn't really show you the um, real strength of the bison, which is actually its meaty punch. Now this is actually one of the strengths. I can easily shoot this T1 heavy. That's um, just behind the rock. It's a really good, really good gun elevation, means that the shell travels at a very, very high trajectory. Come on. 
if we land that shot perfectly well. Uh, and of course, T1 Heavy decided to move forward after camping the same spot for 20 seconds. But after we did click the button, they decided to move forward 2 meters, so we missed completely. And well, that's the life of an artillery player right there for you. Now Stug is digging itself in, so we should be able to hit this guy as soon as he stops. There we go. And again, very unfortunate. If you land these shots, it will be fine. But even if you can, even if you have these um, quite nice burst radius. The um, shots that do miss will do very little damage. No right, well, so far it was not the best of results. We only have made about 350 damage, but it's not over yet. Let's see. Four shots left. Let's make the best of it. There's enemy artillery and the T25. Down there, and come on. Can't shoot just yet. It takes ages until our shots get there, and that's good. We expect to him to stop there, and oh yes, he turned right into our shot. Now that one penetrated, and that's 370 damage for you right there. Again, look at how easily we can shoot that guy who is behind the rock. Our shell comes down almost perfectly on top of him. He thinks he's safe, but he's not. And there he goes. And we have only two shots remaining. Uh, that's okay. For the last Matilda, that should be enough. Okay, it takes quite a lot of time to aim, and there we have to adjust our aim. Those 12 degrees of gun arc did troll us a little bit. Okay. Can someone please spot that guy for us? Anyone? Maybe a Panzer 1C could do the job for us? Come on, grow a pair. But, oh, credits to him. He seems to be a new player and he does eventually get the hint and gets his arse into gear. That Matilda is doomed. He just doesn't know it yet. Oh, there we go. Can we take the shot? Not yet. Oh, he's actually moving forward trying to kill this guy. But our sniper friend does his job, and that was a very easy win. So, this was my ace tanker run in the Bison in less than 7 minutes. Despite being in a tier 5 match, we actually could make a difference and scored almost 900 damage of our own with an additional 900 assisted damage. This was enough to net over 25,500 credits and almost 800 base XP, securing the first place in both teams by damage done and XP earned as well. Now, of course, it has to be said that the enemy team was not really on top of things, but that's just something you have to take advantage of when it happens. Overall, we fired 10 shots and all of the 5 hits penetrated as well. That's 75mm of penetration in action for you. Even more interestingly, we also splashed 3 enemy tanks and that's not something you see really often in these lower tiers. So, that was the Bison. An interesting little machine for sure that's capable to deliver, especially if you know its strengths, though it won't really become anyone's favorite, I think. I hope you did enjoy this little review. If you did, thank you for considering giving it a like or sharing it. Next up, I have a bit of a surprise video planned, and then we go on to have a closer look at the Zuyo, the Tier 5 Japanese CV in World of Warships, with some crazy carrier gameplay. In the meantime, take care guys, enjoy your weekend, and I look forward to seeing you on the battlefield.